Laszlo Bardasio was perhaps one of the most belligerent prime ministers in Europe, to such an extent that he even organized a special provocation in order to quickly and legally attack the Soviet Union. His career in Hungary was quite fast. In 1922, he became head of the press department in the country's foreign ministry. From 1930 to 1934, he worked in London in Hungarian mission as an advisor. And then, until 1941, he was envoy in Bucharest. According to historians, it was his work in Bucharest that gave Bardosi distinctly pro-German views. This was facilitated by the fact that in 1940, ultra-Nazi Antonescu came to power in Romania, who advocated not only the return of the lands seized by the USSR, but also direct military aggression against the Soviet Union, especially seeing what kind of help Hitler was providing his ally by sending troops to protect the oil fields. Bardosi took a firm stand on which side to choose. In turn, the German foreign ministry also drew attention to the promising politician. Therefore, after the death of the Hungarian foreign minister, Reich diplomats did everything to ensure that this post was taken by Laszlo Bardosi. Laszlo Bardosi, who by that time had a strong influence on Hungarian politics, received a really high appointment and by his first decree broke the Treaty of Peace and Friendship with Yugoslavia. And on April 3, 1941, he insisted that Yugoslavia should allow German troops to pass through its territory. For this, on the same day, not without the help of Nazi diplomats, Laszlo Bardosi was appointed to the post of Prime Minister instead of dismissed Count Teleki. And then the blatant intrigues of the Hungarian general staff and the Prime Minister began. The former understood perfectly well that sooner or later Germany would attack the USSR. So they demanded that the government take all measures to ensure that this attack was prepared at an accelerated pace. Laszlo Bardosi himself, without denying his desire to attack, acted a little more cunningly. He hoped that Hitler would persuade Hungary to enter the war, promising some territorial rewards in return. In particular, the return of lands seized by Romania. It is quite understandable that Hitler did not want to lose Romania as a strategic ally, but Hungary was also of considerable interest to him. Therefore, Ribbentrop's diplomats played their own card as carefully and competently as they could. In fact, two camps fought in Hungary. Some wanted to delay the attack, and others, on the contrary, to speed it up. Laszlo Bardasi was a supporter of the second direction. Despite his own caution, he did not change his pro-German views. Moreover, he committed so many crimes that he received a well-deserved death sentence after the war. It should be noted here that in domestic policy, Laszlo Bardosi was no different from his colleagues of the Nazis. The prosecution of Jews and communists was legitimized by government decisions and even the dictator Horthy was more restrained than his too active prime minister. Compliance with German instructions and it is Laszlo Bardosi who was entirely responsible for the fact that Hungary was drawn into the war. Hitler, as it turned out later, did not entirely trust his Hungarian ally, believing that they could reveal the real timing on the attack on the Soviet Union. So, as mentioned above, German diplomats and military men played a rather subtle and cautious game. Even to direct questions about Hungary's status in the war as an ally of Germany, clear and precise answers were not given. However, as soon as requests came from Germany to strengthen the Soviet-Hungarian border on June 14, 1941, Laszlo Verdasi, as well as the general staff, rushed with all their might to fulfill the request of their powerful ally. Moreover, Hadler, who arrived before the start of the war, directly demanded that the railways will be transferred to the jurisdiction of the German general staff as well as permission to use Hungarian radio broadcast stations. Perhaps it could have resolved the matter had it not been for the next action of the Prime Minister, which in fact tracked Hungary into the war. Attack On June 22, Germany attacked the Soviet Union. Hungary, formally having neither the status of the military ally nor any serious claims against the USSR itself, through its Prime Minister on June 23, 1941, announced the decision to break off diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union. Moreover, Laszlo Bardasi, in order to announce such a decision, 
organized a special meeting of the Cabinet of Ministers. Interestingly, shortly before this, the Soviet government told the Hungarian envoy in Moscow that it had no claims against the country and hoped that Hungary would maintain its neutral status. The haste of the Hungarian government was explained quite simply, so as not to be left without satisfying its own territorial requests. Minister of War Karoli Barta spoke at the meeting and stated that, since the German defeated the Poles in three weeks and finished off the French in about the same period, defeated the Yugoslav army in 12 days and occupied the entire Balkans in three weeks, I believe that within six weeks the Germans will be in Moscow and completely defeat Russia. At the same time, despite the announced severance of diplomatic relations, the USSR government hoped that Hungary would still show prudence. On June 24, 1941, the Hungarian envoy in Moscow was handed a request regarding what position Hungary would take in the Soviet-German war. Having received the information, Laszlo Verdasi, as he stated after the war, because of stress, simply forgot to inform the cabinet of ministers about it. However, he did not forget to inform Berlin about the request, at the same time checking with the German envoy in Hungary. Does the imperial government consider it desirable for us to take part in military action against Russia? And if so, what exactly does it consider desirable? The cunning German Ermansdorf once again avoided a direct answer, especially since Laszlo Berdasi mentioned the possibility of resolving the territorial dispute with Romania, the so-called Transylvanian question. So he simply promised to inform the answer from Berlin. Even this did not give Hungary any formal grounds for entering the war. However, Hitler's diplomats, realizing that Hungary was waiting for territorial promises and was in no particular hurry to attack, took an unprecedented action. On June 26, 1941, the city of Kosis was attacked by bombers. One of the bombs, by amazing coincidence, did not explode, so it was quite easy to identify its origin. On the bomb, Investigators found a stamp from the manufacturing plant, Putilov plant. Despite the fact that in the Soviet Union the plant had been renamed Krasny Putilovitz a long time ago, Laszlo Berdasi unequivocally stated that the raid was carried out by Soviet aircraft. This became a legal ground for Hungary's entry into the war. The most interesting thing is that the examination even then showed that the bomb was nothing more than a fake. Moreover, during the alleged bombing by Soviet aircraft, the Soviet-Hungarian border was quiet. The head of the airfield in Kosis, Colonel Adama Krudi, sent a written report to the Prime Minister in which he informed Laszlo Bordasi that the bombing was carried out by a German plane, for some reason with Soviet markings. Laszlo Bordasi answered clearly, if the colonel does not want to get into trouble, then he should remain silent. As a result, an emergency meeting of the Hungarian government was convened, at which the Prime Minister proposed to approve the decision of the head of the country to attack the Soviet Union. Moreover, Laszlo Berdasi, on his own initiative, made a rather cunning trick. In order to avoid discussing the decision, he first announced it and only then announced it the agenda. As a result, the decision could either be approved or not without discussion. Ultimately, Germany achieved what it wanted. Hungary entered the war of its own free will and without demanding any territorial gifts from Hitler. By the way, the Germans reacted to the decision on the Hungarian government with open mockery. We will always accept any Hungarian help. We do not demand, but we will gratefully accept everything that is offered to us voluntarily. Four days later, Hungary crossed the borders of the USSR. Quite a lot has been written about what the participation of Hungarian troops in the war cost the Soviet Union. A little later, Laszlo Bordasi also ensured that Hungary entered into a state of war with Great Britain and the United States, which was absolutely not necessary. Ultimately, in addition to the troops, Hungary in the person of Laszlo Bordasi tried with all its might to fulfill Germans' other wishes to supply oil, fuel, and grain in larger and larger volumes. In 1942, when the country was threatened by famine, the government of Laszlo Berdasi increased oil supplies to 120,000 tons and grain supplies to 10,000 tons. 
the Prime Minister's activity led the Hungarian dictator Horthy to think about a new, calmer candidacy. As a result, the offended Laszlo Bordasi announced that for health reasons, he could no longer serve as Prime Minister, resigning on March 9, 1942. However, this did not save Laszlo Bordasi from being persecuted after the end of the war. The People's Tribunals of Hungary found him guilty of crimes against the Hungarian people and humanity, and in November 1945, he was sentenced to death. The sentence was carried out in 1946 in Budapest.